I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Eric O, the director of the short film Opera, which has just been shortlisted for the Oscar for Best Animated Short Film. Uh, Eric, this may seem like a generic first question to ask, but I, considering the uniqueness of this film, I do have I, I do want to ask this first. How did you come up with the concept for this film? Yeah, so Opera, um, it's actually initially designed as a installation piece, so. Um, not as a conventional film, but more of a art installation you can actually watch a couple of times, you know. So think of it as it's playing on the gigantic wall and you are there to actually watch a couple of times to observe all the details. So that's how it is designed. And, and the purpose here was because it is talking about our life, society, and our history, you know, for the, for the extent, you know, I thought, ah, oh, what's really the best medium or platform or formula to actually capture this? Then I thought of uh, uh, fresco mural paintings, you know, like for example, uh, Michelangelo's, uh, uh, you know, um, Genesis in Sistine Chapel or Bosch's paintings, because usually those murals capture some historical uh, moment in human uh, history. So I thought opera is dealing with something very similar and it has that quality. So uh, um, I'll say opera is a, in a way, contemporary version of fresco murals in a way. So that's how I, you know, uh, put ideas together. So how long did it take you to lay out all the specifics of what you wanted to capture in this film? Because it is so detailed, mm -hmm. so intricately put together. Uh, you know, how long did that take? Uh, thank you. Um, so the whole production time was about four years, um, but it's not like we were working on it just on it for whole time because it was independent production. So there were some a month we didn't, I wasn't able to even touch the opera, right? But, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to the designing, the initial concept, you know, uh, um, like let's say thumbnailing, brainstorming, designing, mapping out whole this master plan, it took me about half a year. Like, so it took me, you know, months of uh, writing and drawing and re you know, uh, restructuring, you know, constructing, you know, the whole, you know, uh, uh, the structure of it. So, um, yeah, so that's how it took, how long it took. So um, what was the most difficult aspect of, the, of bringing this machinery to life, of bringing this whole thing uh, to life? What was the most difficult aspect of doing that? You know, um, like, it, yeah, it is a complex project, but, you know, um, what's interesting that, you know, uh, making itself was not a bad, you know, <laughs> experience because, once I started, okay, this is the map. This is the thing we are making. And it, I, the, the approach I took was very similar to conventional 2D filmmaking. So I broken down into different sequences and sections. So I treated it as like, a, oh yeah, we are just making a film. Like that consists of 24 different sequences or sections, so, right? So of course the production itself, you know, was challenging and it was, was pretty crazy, but the more challenging stuff was uh, time management. Um, because earlier I said it was you know, uh, independent production, which means I didn't have any uh, um, producer or even no budget for the first half of the production. So everyone was like, you know, uh, uh, working on it voluntarily, sacrificing their nights and weekends, including myself. So, you know, that was one of the most challenging part. But at the end of the day, everyone really saw the potential and vision and how special this project was, you know, will be. So that's how we were able to get together and, and, and take this to the finish, finish line, yeah. So uh, you were saying that um, this uh, that took you uh, four years to put this whole thing together. Um, and uh, uh, you, were, you were telling me before we started the interview, you know, uh, that you had finished, that you uh, finished it around July or August of last year. And I was curious as to, do you think that this short takes on any different meaning because of events that have, because we've, it, 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 it's such a, uh, a, cr a wonderful allegory for everything about society. And I'm, I'm curious as to whether you think the short takes on any different meaning because of events that have occurred since you completed production. I think yes and no, because when I was designing this, I really uh, did my best to study our history, like how history has been repeating. And in all these incidents that could, you know, uh, that conveys a lot of social uh, um, issues or problems or things we've been, you know, having uh, trouble with, you know, in, in our human society. 
and then pandemic uh, situation is of course uh, included in the storyline. Like for example, there is a huge whale like creature, you know, and there's a um, two yin and yang giant like creatures like, you know, um, getting uh, participating in the story. Those actually stand for uh, mother nature. You know, I don't, I don't want to say a God figure because it's not really not, you know, but mother nature trying to actually um, like people taking advantage of mother nature and mother nature actually comes into play to actually, you know, straight things up and, and clean things out. And then mother nature actually again become the source of life you know, of, of all of us. So that part, it's already part of the story, which means, you know, with this, you know, a new norm we are having, yes, of course, there are so many more extra rooms to be interpreted, but I'll say, yeah, it is actually already designed to be interpreted in many different ways, depending on where and, 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 and when in, in this time period of you know, our, our history we place. One of the other really striking things about this film is uh, the music in it. And I was curious as to whether or not, first of all, if the music is, origin is an original score, and if so, what was the process like of getting the kind of score that you wanted for this film? Yeah, so it is all original. It's it's um, beautifully done by my buddy, uh, Andrew Vernon. Um, we've been um, teamed up for almost like 10 years now. We've been making films together um, many, many times. And, and, and even this one, like Andrew, he was actually just going to do the uh, sound design initially. And then, hey, yeah, I mean, but I think we, we have something to tie things together. You know, um, it is very... It is a looping video, but there gotta be climax. There's a there's a war going on. There gotta be some sort of at least narrative uh, um, structure that actually ties down together to help you know audience to you know uh, um, digest what we are giving. And then, and then that's when we start to bring in some musical element. So uh, um, like from the moment we decided to actually bring in the musical element, we already knew that okay, let's actually consider this as a film now. You know, let's say there's a beginning. And then there's a, a um, you know, uh, inciting incidents, and there's a gradual uh, um, graph going towards the climax, and there's a climax, and there's a re resolution, and then all the way connected back to the beginning, right? So um, that structure, like we actually uh, um, borrowed probably from the uh, traditional filmmaking uh, language, right? So um, yeah, but um, like taste-wise, I mean, we try to go for something very polar opposite, like very classical. Like because it's a timeless piece, we want to want this to be uh, um, enjoyed and 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 interpreted in the many different like I know uh, era hopefully from now on, but at the same time very modern too you know so modern and classical how can we actually achieve both two different like things you know but again Andrew our composer slash um, sound designer were able to really manage to make something together and and I'm really proud of it yeah. So uh, I can only imagine what uh, some of the reactions have been uh, to, by some people when they see this for the first time. Um, I'm, I'm curious, uh, what for you, what's been the most memorable reaction you've received from someone uh, who's watched the movie? Um, <laughs> like, it's kind of heartbreaking because, again, the most proper appropriate way to actually showcase this is in the big theater or big physical space which hasn't happened yet you know of course because of this pandemic situation so i'm still looking forward to uh having it like in the future when things get better so i'm sure that by then we'll be able to finally hear out like you know more appropriate proper reaction from the uh the people or the viewers but even yet i've been getting so many great reviews and reactions and responses and and what's interesting is it's all different because you know oh i saw this particular things in here and it's just really got me thinking about like life or this really got me thinking about like you know uh, um what happened in in their own society and their nation or, or their countries you know um but i think i feel most rewarded you know when people uh, resonates, you know, in a personal level. It's it's ah, oh, it's our life. It's really our society. You know, I remember I showcased this in France, for example. You know, you know, uh, like my friends in Paris, they were like, "God, dude, Eric, this is just like what's happening in France." You know, <laughs> on the other hand, you know, in the states side, oh, this is America. <laughs> you know, so and then so that's actually yeah, I think it is true because at the end of the day, bottom line is that's that's us. We are only human. 
and and it's we are diff we may speak different languages or we may live in a different slightly different cultures but it's very universal that's who we are and then that's our society and that's our civilization right yeah so as i uh mentioned earlier uh your the opera has been uh shortlisted uh to possibly be nominated uh for best animated short film at the oscars uh what was your reaction when you found out that the film had been shortlisted it's still unreal, <laughs> Charlie. It's 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 crazy because, um, mainly because you know, um, the format. Like earlier, you, we started talking about it, the format already because um, it is uh, it's not a conventional film. It's it's not a like, like a film film. It's more of a moving, uh, illustration or moving painting almost. You know, so uh, um, like you know, getting uh, I don't know uh, um recognized by academy members this way is such a like humbling experience honestly because i thought ah i don't think academy members or academy will <laughs> like this because it is so different and and but again like they appreciate it and they recognized it and then and then i'm just i'm just so thankful you know that's the only thing of god you know yeah well, uh, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we, uh, we wish you all the best uh, over this upcoming award season. And to all of our viewers, please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and be sure to go to, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks again, Eric. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thank you, everybody.